Today I've got the Nikkor NB10000 power bank. This thing is made from carbon fiber, as you can see, both the frame and the top and the bottom. It's got USB A that's capable of 18 watts output, USB C that's 18 watts in or out, as well as USB C PD, and a button here. It's a pretty small and lightweight package, as you can see when I compare it to my cell phone. Thanks to Nikkor Store for sending this to me to look at and review. And if you aren't a follower, I'd appreciate you taking a look at my Instagram and Facebook pages. Your support there really does help the channel. And I'm trying to share more news and other flashlight related content there. So make sure you're following those. Now let's get into the review. Packaging of the NB10000 in here is really nice. It's a box that looks like it's got carbon fiber all over it and really not much details about it. It does pull out here. Inside you get the power bank itself. You get a manual, a warranty card, and a USB A to C cable here. The power bank is made from carbon fiber, reinforced plastic case, and it's a lot more expensive and feels stronger than your typical material. And by that, I'm meaning the frame here around the edges and internally. It feels a lot like a high quality tool if you're used to what like a glass reinforced plastic feels like. As for the carbon fiber here on the front, I'm not so sure. Nikkor says it's real and it sure does look real, but it doesn't have any texture to it. And all the carbon fiber I have has texture to it. You can either see it or feel it. And up here, when you've got it just at the right angle and you kind of squeeze, it deforms more so on this side a little bit. I'm just not so sure about that. So at best, it's a real carbon fiber, maybe a peel and ply, or maybe it's just super thin. And at worst, it's just kind of a printed sticker-ish carbon fiber. Either way, I think it's pretty cool and I like it. The other thing I really like here is all your inputs and outputs are put on the side here. They're laser engraved and they're kind of in a lighter color so you can read it and figure out what it actually is, which is nice. On the back side here, you've got the name and the number. And then on the front, you've got your ports. You've got your USB C to C, which is in and out. You've got your USB A, which is just power out. Then you've got your button here um, with your LED indicators underneath there and to turn the power bank on. Oh, and the power bank is water rated at IPX5, which is rare for a power bank. It means it can sustain low pressure jets of water or splashes, so it's perfect for adventuring, even though it's not officially rated for it. I did even a submersion test and it seemed to hold out just fine. I've got my Nikkor NB10000 here hooked up to my Sofren SP33 head, and you can see it has no battery on this end. It's just plugged in with USB power, and most power banks aren't waterproof but the NB10000 is, so let's see what it's like when I dunk it. So here it is in water. You can see a few bubbles are draining out and it's working just fine. The flashlight is working great still, so no problems there. I measured the length at 122 millimeters long, width here at 59 millimeters, and thickness here at 10.5 millimeters. So it's nice and thin and slides between most modern smartphones really easily, allowing you to charge in the pocket, which is convenient, especially when traveling. And at 151.2 grams, it's pretty light thanks to use of that carbon fiber. I've got a couple other 10,000 milliamp hour power banks that I have reviewed on the channel, this Aki being one, and you can see the Nikkor is a smaller overall footprint. Thickness is about the same, but the uh, Nikkor is 41 grams lighter, which is kind of substantial. The other power bank that I tested here was this Anchor, and uh, it's a 10,000 milliamp hour as well. And it's significantly shorter and a little bit smaller in uh, width, but it's significantly fatter. My guess is the Anchor here is using cylindrical cells whereas the Nikkor here is using a polymer pouch. And these two are, uh, the Anchor's 41 grams lighter. So Nikkor's claim of this NB10,000 being the lightest power bank in the industry, so far I believe that I don't have anything lighter. As I mentioned before, the NB10,000 has one USB-A port for output up to 18 watts, and then you've got your USB-C, which you can use for in or out at both 18 watts. I used my Aki gallium nitride charger that I previously reviewed and had no issues with. And to charge, I've got a cable here, really easy, just plug it in. And you start to get some LED indicators on the front side telling you the status. My power bank's at about one bar right now out of three. Um, and that's one area here that I think is a little bit of a negative 
This is hard to tell the difference here between these three. They're just so jammed together and they're kind of far away from that button ledge. So it's kind of hard to read the display. Total charge time with this charger um, and the power bank empty was three hours and 13 minutes. Peak charge rate I saw was 8.9 volts at two amps or right at around 18 watts. And my CT2 meter recorded a total of 43.44 watt hours went into the battery. I ran three discharge curves with this power bank at five volts, three amps, nine volts at two amps, and 12 volts at 1.5 amps. Power was stable with all three modes. At five volts, three amps, I measured a total energy transfer of 31.29 watt hours and average voltage of 5.18 volts and total discharge time of two hours one minute at nine volts, two amps. I measured total energy at 29.16 watt hours. Voltage average was 9.14 volts and total discharge time was one hour and 35 minutes. At 12 volts at 1.5 amps, I measured total energy at 29.71 watt hours and average voltage at 12.02 volts and total discharge time of one hour and 38 minutes. The voltage here slipped a little bit the last 20 minutes as you can see from the graph. So what I've got set up here is voltage pass through. I've got power coming in from the wall from my Aki charger into the power bank. And then I've got uh, the USB A to C cable that the charger comes with plugged into my phone here. And you can see that the phone is charging by um, turn it on here. Might be kind of hard to see there with my battery lights, but it is charging at a uh, slower speed. If I hook the phone up to the power bank just with the A to C cable, not charge at the same time, my phone detects it as fast charge and will charge at 18 watts. This is great for charging other devices too. Um, when you're traveling or something like that, you can do this with one charger and charge your power bank and your phone at once. It's something all power banks should have, but not all do. It also allows you to charge your flashlight or really any other USB-C device. I'm, Got this Sofern SP33, which I reviewed a couple weeks ago. It's also charging up no problems. When I did charge my Note 8, I went from 15% to 100% in an hour 51 via USB-C and two thirds of the lights on the power bank were still lit. I charged my phone again from 50 to 100% and the power bank was still showing two thirds full. The power bank also has one other feature here that's really nice. It's got a low power mode for charging your IoT devices, headphones, stuff like that. You just press and hold this button here and you'll get a white LED that comes on at the very uh, front of this indicator. Again, hard to see on video just because those lights are so small. That will allow you to charge your headphones and other low power devices without the power bank shutting off. And you do have to turn that mode off and you do that by just pressing and holding it again until the light shuts off. So for me, the pros are it's got real carbon fiber. I'm a sucker for carbon fiber, whether it's real or fake, it doesn't matter to me. It's really small and compact and lightweight. It supports 18 watts in or out and charges via USB-C PD, and it's got low power mode. The cons are that indicator LEDs are really close together and hard to read. It's got pass-through charging, but it's slower. And it's a little bit on the pricey side for a power bank these days, but this is a premium build quality one. My conclusion is the NB10000 is small, well-built power bank with a great size to performance ratio. It has the features I'm looking for in a power bank in 2020, like PD and uh, nine and 12 volt support, as well as low power. It doesn't hurt that it's made of carbon fiber too, since I'm a sucker for carbon fiber. That said, you do pay a premium for these features and being carbon fiber. There are cheaper options out there in the marketplace. You just pay for it in weight, less features, and overall size. That said, this is my new travel charger. Again, assuming someday we will travel again. It's really easy to put in the pocket and charge while you're on the go. Something I found essential in big cities. It also fits nicely in my camera bag. The traditional power bank brands like Anchor and Aki better watch out because Nikkor is coming from them. If you've got any questions on the NB10,000, let me know in the comments below. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure you like this video, subscribe and share with your friends so I can continue to bring content like this to you every week. Thanks.